The Dow Jones average was down 350 some points. Uh, gold was up $32. Oil was up another $5. And there's a lot of chaos out there, and everybody's worrying about $4 a gallon gasoline. But I don't think there's a clear understanding exactly why that has occurred. We do know that there's a supply and demand. There's a lot of demand for oil. The supplies may be dwindling. But there are other reasons for a high cost of energy. One is inflation. For instance, to pay for the war that has been going on and the domestic spending, we have been spending a lot more money than we have. So what do we do? We send the bills over to the Federal Reserve. They create new money. In the last three years, our government, through the Federal Reserve and our banking system, created $4 trillion of new money. That is one of the main reasons why we have this high cost of energy and $4 a gallon uh, gasoline. But there is another factor that I want to talk about tonight, and that is not only the fear of inflation and future inflation, but the fear factor dealing with our foreign policy. And in the last several weeks, if not for months now, we have heard a lot of talk about the potentiality of Israel and or the United States bombing Iran. And it's in the marketplace. It's being bid up. The energy prices are being bid up because of this fear. It is, has been predicted if bombs start dropping that you're going to see energy prices double or triple. It's just the thought of it right now that helps to push these prices, uh, the price of energy up. And that is a very real thing going on right now. But to me, it's almost like deja vu all over again, as it has been said. We listened to the rhetoric for years and years before we went into Iraq. We did not go in the correct manner. We didn't declare war. We're there. It's an endless struggle. We're in Iran. We're endlessly struggling there. And I cannot believe it that we may well be on the verge of initiating bombing of Iran. Leaders on both sides of the aisle, in the administration, that have all said so often no options can be taken off the table, including a nuclear first strike on Iran. The fear is, they say, maybe someday they're going to get a nuclear weapon. Even though our own CIA and our NEI uh, says a national intelligence estimate has said they have not been working the Iranians have not been working on a nuclear weapon since 2003. They say they're enriching uranium, but they have no evidence whatsoever that they're enriching uranium for weapons purposes. That they may well be enriching uranium for peaceful purposes, and that is perfectly legal. They have been a member of the non-proliferation treaties, and they are under the investigation of the IAEA, and Al-Baradai has verified that in the last year, there have been nine unannounced in, in, uh, investigations and uh, examinations of the Iranian nuclear structure, and they have never been found to be found in violation. And yet, this country and Israel are talking about a, a, a preventive war, starting bombing for this reason, without negotiation, without talks. Now, the one issue that I do want to mention tonight is a resolution that is about to come to this floor if uh, our suspicions are correct after the uh, July 4th holiday. And this bill will probably be brought up under suspension. It'll be expected to be passed easily, probably will be, and it's just more war propaganda, more preparation to go to war against Iran. And this resolution, H.J. Res 362, is a virtual war, uh, war resolution. It is the declaration of, uh, of, of tremendous sanctions and uh, boycotts and uh, embargoes on the Iranians. Very, very severe. Let me just read what is involved in this, if this bill passes, what we're telling the president he must do. This demands that the president impose stringent inspection requirements on all persons, vehicles, ships, planes, trains, and cargo entering or departing Iran, and prohibiting the international movement of all Iranian officials. I mean, this, this is unbelievable. This is, uh, this is closing down uh, Iran. 
Where do we have this authority? Where do we get the moral authority? Where do we get the international legality for this? Where do we get the constitutional authority for this? This is what we did for 10 years before we went into Iraq. We starved children, 50,000 individuals that was admitted probably died because of the sanctions on the Iraqis. They had, were incapable at the time of attacking us. And all the propaganda that was given for our need to go into Iraq wasn't true. And it's not true today about the severity. And they say, yeah, but Ahmadinejad, he's a bad guy. He's threatened violence. But you know what? Us threatening violence is very, very similar. We Fired. must, we must look at this carefully. We just can't go to war again the time under these expired. careless, frivolous conditions. Mr. Stupak. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to claim the gentleman's time. Without objection. Thank you.